Well, this is the back of the Samurai, and what I did was I just put a fuel send sending unit in here, and um, I'm going to tell you I did it the quick way, because I already did it once, and I didn't feel like taking down the gas tank with the trailer hitch and the skid plate and all the wiring I just put in there for the trailer hitch. Besides, so I cut a hole here, I'm making a, I made a, uh, I'm making a bracket basically that's going to bolt over here after this is done, and I want to give you the measurements, you see, you see the, the, this thing here, the fender, right? The inner fender. You got one high hump, the second high hump. You come in about just in the inside of that second high hump. And you go, you got one, two, and then you see there's two high humps right here, right here, right? So the second high hump, and you cut basically, you know, I was measuring it from the outside. It was kind of hard to tell. Could have done it a little bit better. So that's about a seven inch hole. Um, and from here, let's say from we well, could see the you could see the measurement, right? You could go a little further this way, but that's it, it's far enough. Like um, about seven inches from where you can see that lip in the gasket right there. That's where it is, and then it's about seven inches by seven inches and from here the hole is about six and three quarters inches from this I see six and a half six and three quarters inches from the inner fender the inner fender so I didn't cut all the way through on this kind of cut it a little bit there just so I can bend it up and I put some gorilla tape around here it's a lot easier because these things can screw up on you anyway. You can, you can corrode it. I was having a hard time even with these nuts, these screws. They were corroded. And I was cleaning them and cleaning them and cleaning them. I was cleaning them with the Dremel tool. I was spraying them uh, with WD-40 rust release penetrant. And I was checking the ground, because I have the ground for the trailer hitch to this, to make sure the gauge was reading right. And I filled up the gas tank. So now... Without the ground wire on there, and just the ground from the screws, because the ground is from the screws from the top of the, what do you call it? So I filled it up to the very top. You can see that, you can see it right there. It's full, like it should be. So it works. You turn it off. The gate should go down, down, down. You know, it's dropping. You can see a little bit there. So it works. It's reading correctly. What I need to do probably is get some new screws for the top of that thing because, I mean, I got it working right, but just, you know, it's just one screw is actually really making a full contact, which is that one. Put a washer there and I was trying it with, it still wasn't doing it. So if I got some brand new screws on there and put the rust release, uh, that stuff, you know, it would make good contact and put some, uh, some rust preventative over it so that doesn't screw up but it's probably good to have that access hole what I'm going to make is a piece of metal going over this that overlaps that with some um, what do you call those uh, the blind riv nuts that'll hold it in so anytime I want to take this out I can just unscrew the riv nuts because it won't push through it'll have like a lip going over that and I can just flap it up and do that and um, I can put a little RTV on there so make sure it's weather sealed so if I ever have to access that again I could do it what happened with that uh, thing see this is the this is the old one this was replaced there was nothing really wrong with it until this one problem happened I had the, the muffler was leaking I didn't really think it was a problem I just said well it's a little bit noisy to hell with it well the exhaust gas is we're going up in an area under the body that caused the wires to melt and I had to re rewire all the wires going back to here plus you know the fuel uh, sending unit well it damaged the fuel sending unit because one spot of it it gets it doesn't read right in some places it reads right when it's full and it reads right when it gets down about a quarter of a third of a tank but there's pots, there's, it's got a dead spot where it could be about two-thirds full, and it would say 
it would go to empty until the car bounced around the Jeep, whatever, the four the Samurai, whatever. It bounced around and then it jumped up again. So it was it was the sending unit got damaged from the wires being melted together by the exhaust leak. This is why you got to watch for everything, man. So I'm going to get some new screws for the top of that. I know it works fine now, but I'm going to get some new screws for the top of that. I'm going to put some Gorilla Tape across there so it'll seal up. And uh, I'm going to make, um, you know, a thing that goes over here in that the lip. So it'll close over that so it can't fall through. And then it'll have a few rib nuts with the, um, you know, the Phillips head that I can use to... Um, you know, secure it down, and then anytime I want to open it up, now I'll, I'll use a RTV as a gasket cement, so make sure it's freaking all waterproof and stuff. But uh, this is actually an easier way to do this because uh, there really should have been an access hole here for this anyway. But you know, it, it's not that hard to drop the tank. But if you have the trailer hitch and the skid plate, it does become a pain in the butt. Now, I'm glad I did it this way because I realized I didn't have the little screws with me. And it got it to work, but I want to replace those screws. So if I didn't do it this way, I'd have to drop the gas tank again to replace the screws. <laughs> I ain't doing that. So this is this is a fast and easy way. Gave you the measurements, okay? So if you want to do it... Oh, when you're cutting through that steel, remember, there are hoses underneath there. Do not cut too far down. Make sure your cutoff wheel is only going just enough to cut through the metal. As a matter of fact, don't do the whole thing with the cutoff wheel. I finished it up with the Dremel. Because I was trying to make sure I didn't cut any hoses or anything like that. So, worked out pretty good. But I was having a hard time to get the ground to work exactly right. What you got to do to make sure your gauge is reading correct is run a manual ground from the body of... Like this part here, this part here, that's your power wire, here's your ground. So if these screws are corroding, it's not going to get a good ground. So if you want to check it, you want to run a manual ground, because I have the ground for the trailer hitch there, to that, and then see if your gas gauge reads higher. Then you know this thing isn't grounded perfect, and you're not going to have an accurate reading on your gas gauge. I finally got that right, if you're messing around with some washers and stuff, but... I'm going to replace those little screws. They do not give you the little screws with this thing. I don't know why, but... Gee, I mean, freaking... It's going to cost me uh, probably a dollar for the screws and five bucks for shipping. Maybe not. But, you know, that's usually, maybe not. But I should replace them because it could give me a hard time. Yeah, it works fine. It'll take a little while to get up there, but... It, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's got good ground. It's got a good ground. And a better ground than I had last time, too. <laughs> That's good. That's good. So, that is correct. Yeah. Onward and forward. Doing a lot of different things here. So, we're going to be working on a... I've been delaying on working on a can. <laughs> but, we're going to be doing that here pretty soon. We're going to be doing that. i got to paint it all green and stuff. All the drab. It's not a work of art, but it'll be functional. Hopefully I get to going on this tomorrow. Because I was waiting to do that Suzuki thing. And uh, I've got to change one little bulb in the interior. Oh, here's my little cat. This one should be... This is Feather, I think. No, wait a minute. Feather's inside. This is Onyx. His tail his tail's a straighter. You see these guys are freaking... He was sneezing. So he's doing fine now. These guys are okay, man. And I was out here checking my um, trailer with that El Camino. Make sure all the lights work, the wiring in the El I wired up that El Camino. Those wires in the back with the splice connectors back in 1995. And um, they have not corroded in all this time. I and mean, a lot of times the back end of that's been out there getting wet. Reason being is because I used, um, what do you call it, um, yeah, weather strip adhesive over the quick connectors 
to totally seal them in. The butt connectors and the splice connectors, the weather strip adhesive, or you can use shoe goo or something like that. And a lot of people, then those cheap ass connectors last forever because they're totally sealed in with weather strip adhesive. There's no way that corrosion can get on the wire. I should freaking put that in a separate video, but YouTube don't pay me nothing anyway, so. Pay attention to what you might say in these videos because sometimes they just happen to throw in some other hints that a lot of people don't know. In other words, if you have the, like the butt connector and you crimp them together and there's always a spot where the water can get in there and eventually corrode the copper wire, you seal them up with weather strip adhesive or shoe goo. Same thing with the ones that are splice connectors. Seal them up with the shoe goo or the weather strip adhesive. Those things have been in there for... 25 freaking years. <laughs> Plug in a trailer, it works fine. Everything works. You would not see that. That would never have happened if I didn't do that stuff to it. That's why some people go, why are you being so nitpicky? Well, that's why, because it lasts forever then, pretty much. So, you know, after I start messing with this cannon and stuff, I'm going to get under here, and I'm going to probably pull off the catalytic converter on that El Camino. And maybe, maybe, unless I welded it on there. I don't know if I did that or not. Maybe I did. If I didn't, if I didn't weld it on there, I'm going to pull it off and uh, knock a hole through that damn thing. <laughs> so it's a flow through. And it'll look like I'll have a catalytic converter because that thing is brand new and it was doing making crazy noises. So we'll fix that up one way or the other. I mean, it won't be the correct way of fixing it, but it will be the way... That'll stay fixed. It's in a way that is the correct way. There's Dixie Cat. He showed up. Oh yeah. By the way, if you want to drop a, you know, a couple dollars into PayPal, it's on BitChute. Uh, I'm only on BitChute PayPal, so if you want to look at that. So if, you know, if that advice I gave you saved you some money, um, only if it saved you some money. And if you don't, if you're broke, don't give me no money because I'm telling you what, I just freaking reminds me of. You know, even if it's five bucks or something, don't do that because if these, it reminds me of one of those preachers. You know, you're these millions of dollars preachers rolling around, and everybody's giving them the last dollar so because he's going to save them. Yeah, crock of crap. So if I save you a couple bucks, you know, I mean, I feed my cats with the money too, you know. <laughs> I mean, if I save you a couple bucks on that stuff, gave you some advice that was useful, good to go. You know, in other words, uh, doing uh, mechanic stuff here for free. YouTube ain't paying me. And you, what are you wailing about? This guy, I know you want attention. Anyway, time to go to the gym. Over and out. Meow, meow. I mean, Mr. Putin. Meow. I know. Why, 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 why? Meow. All right, we're going to go in there. He, he, you know what? I got to personally feed this guy. That's where he is. And you... What are you doing? <laughs> Glad you're okay, little snooks. Boots was okay, too. So, we're all okay for now. If something goes wrong. Anyway, over now. Like I said, there's Boots. He just showed up, too. So, all accounted for. <laughs> Big brawler. Mr. Marble Cake. The four white paws. Boots the Confederate cat. He's a good guy. <laughs>